Well, good morning all. This morning we have the pleasure of going through the topic of rickets. So rickets is a paediatric disorder that's characterised by deformity and growth restriction. It, the word comes from the German ricken, meaning twisted. And historically it's been considered the English disease. This uh, chap on the right hand side of the screen was one of the first to describe it in 1600s in England. I think he um, gained inspiration from his own mutton chops in uh, using lamb's wool ligatures to try and correct the, the deformities. Um, so as we know it's from prolonged vitamin D deficient, deficiency that leads to defective mineralization of the growth plate cartilage and bone. It's no longer a disease of the past with the national incidence uh, in Australia now up to 4.9 uh, as of 30 years ago it was uh, about 3 per 100,000 and in developing countries it's one of the most common non-communicable diseases. Uh, so vitamin D metabolism is not quite as difficult as this graph makes it look. Um, so essentially 7 dehydrocholesterol in the skin um, is transformed by ultraviolet light into cholecalciferol, which is vitamin D3. The liver then transforms it into calcidiol, um, and then it's further activated by 1-alpha hydroxylase into the most active form of calcitriol. So problems at any of these stages can lead to vitamin D deficiency. What does vitamin D do? It's an important regulator of calcium and bone homeostasis. In the small intestine, it enhances calcium and phosphorus absorption. It decreases calcium and phosphorus, phosphorus resorption uh, from the bone, and it prevents calcium and phosphorus being excreted from the kidney. So as you would expect in deficiency, um, it does the opposite and decreases calcium being absorbed in the intestine and causes a compensatory increase in parathyroid hormone and bone resorption to try and maintain circulating calcium. There's been quite a lot of talk recently about what vitamin D deficiency actually is and what number we call vitamin D deficient. Uh, the absolute limits are still controversial. Um, most people use 25-hydroxyvitamin uh, D as the most appropriate marker of vitamin D status. That's because it's the vitamin D uh, subtype with the longest half-life. Generally, serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D of less than 25 is considered to be at a level uh, that's likely to increase the likelihood of rickets, and 25-hydroxy uh, level less than 50 um, represents insufficiency. Number of causes for vitamin D deficiency rickets, of which prematurity is one. Um, however, maternal vitamin D deficiency is probably the most significant uh, in the younger age groups um, because fetal vitamin D is acquired entirely from the mother. Um, infants that are born to vitamin D replete so normal vitamin D uh, levels, if they are solely breastfed, the uh, vitamin D levels uh, become, their vitamin D levels become in the deficient range after eight weeks of being breastfed. So there's not a lot of uh, vitamin D in breast milk. Uh, also from low exposure to ultraviolet B light, uh, from dark skin colour, and that's part of the reason the incidence in Australia is increasing because of our relatively lower light levels. Um, to traditional um, areas for people with dark skin and also due to covering up without supplementation during pregnancy. Uh, poor nutrition you would expect to be one of the, the um, more common reasons for vitamin D deficiency, however not in Australia anymore. And that's uh, from uh, long-term exclusive breastfeeding and veg vegetarian diets as well as formula-fed infants. So how does it actually cause rickets? Um, so as phosphates lost from the kidney um, as a result of increased parathyroid because of the falling calcium, um, the lack of phosphate results in the failure of osteoid to mineralize at the growth plate and the periosteal surfaces. 
which causes a large amount of osteoid to collect on top of the, the periosteal surface. Osteoclasts are then unable to penetrate through this thick osteoid layer, meaning that the secondary mineralization phase is prolonged. So this means that the bone beneath the osteoid becomes brittle, uh, even though the overall bone mineral content decreases. A number of different subtypes, nutritional rickets, I think we'd be most uh, familiar with, can be from a lack of vitamin D, calcium or phosphate. Uh, vitamin D dependent rickets is another subtype um, because of a breakdown in that vitamin D metabolism chain that we were looking at earlier. And vitamin D resistant rickets is the uh, final subtype. So familial hypophosphatemic rickets um, is the most commonly encountered form in developing countries. It's an excellent dominant condition um, and is a result of the impaired renal tubular reabsorption of phosphate. Uh, so when we encounter someone uh, that we are suspicious for rickets, these are the points that are important in history. So diet and sunlight exposure history, family history of short stature, dentition, alopecia, and consanguineous parents, as well as growth and orthopedic concerns. Should also ask about the signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia, such as muscle cramps, numbness, paresthesia, seizures. So clinical features of rickets are most often seen during periods of peak growth, particularly in the first two years of life, but also during the adolescent growth spurt. Um, most often, or sorry, more clinically obvious is the bowing of long bones. Um, you can also see codfish vertebrae, which are biconcave vertebrae on imaging, as well as dorsal kyphosis. may also present with gait disturbances and the enlargement of the costochondral junction, which is the rachitic rosary, which is uh, often seen in textbooks. They are also known to be, have growth restriction. In general, adults who have had uh, rickets uh, rarely make it over five foot of height. <coughs> um, also have uh, a higher incidence of dental disease and uh, pathological fractures. So the image on the right here is what's known as a looser zone. So it's a, a pseudo fracture on the compression side of the bone. So this is a list of the investigations that are recommended um, in the workup of vitamin D deficient rickets or any rickets. So baseline serum, calcium, phosphorus, ALP, parathyroid hormone, urea, nitrogen, creatinine, and 25-hydroxy vitamin D. Uh, and that's because 25-hydroxy vitamin D is uh, the best indicator of the overall vitamin D status. Also useful looking at uh, the urinary levels of calcium and phosphorus for their increased excretion. So after doing all of these tests, uh, if a case is confirmed, to be as a result of nutritional rickets. The findings that you would see are lowered levels of serum calcium, phosphate, vitamin D subtypes, and urinary calcium, but you'd see an increase in parathyroid hormone, ALP, and urinary phosphorus. So potentially of more interest to us are the radiographic features, um, and the classic definition or classic findings on radiographs are bowing and fascial widening, fascial cupping and fraying, which you can see on the image of the distal radius there. That's often um, more pronounced in the ulna or seen earlier in the ulna than the radius when you're looking at the wrist. And the uh, findings are more pronounced at areas of increased growth. So around the, the knee, so distal femur, proximal tibia, and, uh, and the wrist. Um, also see coxa vera. Um, and typically osteopenia. However, in hypophosphatemic rickets, uh, the converse happens and can often see sclerosis. So in other areas, radiographic features you might see are the rachitic rosary, um, which on this image are the uh, rounded, widened rib ends, giving the uh, typical rosary bead appearance. You can also see uh, delayed closure of the anterior fontanelle, frontal bossing, dental ab abnormalities, um, as well as uh, scar spinal uh, pathology. 
So there's a lot of uh, talk about the fracture risk associated with vitamin D deficiency, um, although it's not quite as proven as you would imagine. So we know that vitamin D is positively associated with bone mineral density, so the higher your vitamin D, the more likely you are to have better bone mineral density. Um, however, we haven't been able to confirm that vitamin D levels themselves correlate with fracture risk. So it would make sense, but we, we don't yet have the evidence. This fracture risk is, or has traditionally been uh, described to be from the excessive osteoid formation causing a lower amount of mineralized bone mass. However, more recently we've come to understand that uh, the bone beneath the osteoid layer is more heavily mineralized, uh, so they have, can have a um, higher bone mineral density or, um, beneath the osteoid, but that bone is structurally quite poor and is um, characteristic of older, more brittle bone. The treatment of uh, rickets, as you would expect, um, relies on the correction of metabolic imbalance. Surgical interventions rarely necessary to correct the deformity. Uh, usually in um, very young children, the deformity corrects itself as they grow after correction of the uh, uh, biochemical derangements. And we shouldn't um, perform any corrective uh, surgery until these uh, uh, biochemical imbalances have been resolved. Plenty of different types of vitamin D, routes of administration, um, schedules of administration that we can use to correct vitamin D deficiency. Um, cholecalciferol is one of the more useful types because it can be administered intramuscularly or orally. And in terms of the uh, routes of administration in sunshine, um, the protocol is to give 150,000 units in a single oral dose and recheck vitamin D levels three months down the track. Um, so very useful in our um, potentially uh, lower compliance patients. So after treating vitamin D deficient deficiency rickets, you can see radiographic changes within a week. We had a, uh, a child um, the year before last who presented with very typical changes that had almost completely resolved after six weeks uh, of high dose vitamin D. And you can expect the physical examination findings to normalize within around six months, depending on the degree of deformity.